Now we haven't done a fuzzy nymph on the channel in a while, so I thought we were about due. Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So I was flipping through Federation of Fly Fishers Pattern Encyclopedia, as I often do, looking for a cool nymph to tie that I've never tied before, and I came across one tied by Scott Sanchez. Now the pattern is called the Ultra Zug, and I'm not sure exactly how it got its name because it doesn't really look anything like a Zug bug. To me it looks a little bit more like a non-fancy kind of prince nymph. I think it's going to have a little bit of that profile. So a little bit about Scott Sanchez. Now he's a contemporary tire. He's still alive and still making bugs today. He's from out in Wyoming because the, a lot of the books I've seen that he's authored talk about Jackson Hole. He's been a commercial fly tire and an author and featured in, you know, some DVDs and even VHS tapes back when fly tying videos weren't all that common. And he was the winner of the 2010 Buzz Busick Award, so you know he's a very well-renowned, well-respected tire. So this bug we're going to do tonight, super simple pattern, doesn't take long at all to tie, and you will learn a technique that we don't do an awful lot of. It's, it's not a hackle, it's kind of hair dubbing up, wrapped where you would a hackle and then just kind of pulled out, pulled along, sort of like a wing, but sort of just like a, kind of like a hackle. So it's a cool looking pattern, again, really easy to tie. I think y'all are gonna like it, let's give it a shot. So there we go in the vise, an ultra zug, or maybe it's a slight variation, you'll see in a minute. I've substituted a little bit for that fuzzy dubbing. Now there are a wide range of sizes for this guy. The recipe says eight to 18. I'm going pretty big, that's a size 10, one X long nymph hook. And I've got some brown, 70 denier thread right here in my thread spool holder thing. And I'll take a base all the way back to the start of the bend. Now it does have a little sliver of a tail and the recipe says guinea feathers. So I've got some guinea right here. If you don't have guinea, I've dyed an olive or yellow or something like this, just use pheasant tail fibers. And I'm gonna spin it in my fingers, just try to break up the tips a little bit. And I think that's gonna be it right there. Not real long. Let's do a couple of wraps and make sure we got our length correctly. Uh, yeah, I think that's just fine right there. So a couple more going back, a couple to lock it in. Now let's take one strand of Peacock Crystal Flash right here. And you might think this is some pretty thin stuff. Are we gonna be able to see it? And that's what I thought, but you can. You'll see in a second that this stuff really does add a little flash, even just one thin strand right here. Okay, so let's get our thread back here where we're gonna start dubbing the body. And I'm gonna put some wax on it because I'm putting some really fuzzy stuff on here. And the recipe says peacock scintilla dubbing, which I really have no idea what that is. But I did see another recipe out there. It just says some fuzzy synthetic type dubbing. So I'm gonna go with a sow scud. And this is peacock right here. So sow scud and peacock, and I'm gonna try to put it on pretty thick. So I'm, my goal here is to get a, a football shaped body. So really kind of thick. And if you can't get that with you know a single noodle, I guess you can just put dubbing layers over other layers. So we'll see, we'll see how much of a, a football shaped body we can get right here. Okay, it's getting a little out of hand up there at the front, but you know what, I'm not gonna worry about that. We'll just pull that back, because we're gonna pick it out in a minute anyway. So that's football shaped enough. Now let's just counter wrap this crystal flash. Okay, two or three wraps to catch that off. Now before we go into the, the next step, I am gonna fluff it out. I'm going to take my dubbing brush and just brush some of this out. The recipe did not say to do this. I mean, well, the recipe isn't tying instructions, but it looked like in the couple pictures I saw that it was a pretty fuzzy body. So there we go, let's do that right there. Now for the next part, I'm taking that same sow scud, but I'm getting a little crazy. I'm mixing in a little bit of beaver. So what I've got here, that's mostly sow scud, I'd guess. Well, maybe it's 50-50, but I'm not gonna dub this 
onto my thread. What I'll do, I'll just pull it out, try to get some long fibers, and then kind of just stack it on itself right there and do that a couple of times. And then till I get kind of a, a long bundle, bunch of fibers like this right here. And I'll just catch it in right here where I am. Uh, maybe measure the length right there, but we're gonna pull some of this out and and not really trim it, but sculpt it, I would say. So let's put a, a pinch wrap right there. Take a couple of them. Are we gonna be able to get our head up there? Yep, I think we are. So a few extra wraps going back there. We got that in pretty tight. Now let's trim off this front. Get in here and cut it as short as you can. Now let's clean up this head. If you don't get it too short, you risk clobbering your eye, which I might do a little bit right there, but we'll see. I'm just gonna take my thread right back behind the eye and then try to ramp it up. Give me a nice little nymph head right here. Okay, that's, that's good enough. You see a little bit of that green under there, but I'm not gonna lose any sleep over that. So let's get a four or five turn whip finish in right here. Now, let's just sculpt this, this wing. So what I'll do, I'll just grab it pretty tight and then pull some of these loose ones out. If you want it fairly sparse, maybe pull some to the side. Just do whatever you want. I, I would kind of avoid cutting it with your scissors and just, you know, give you this little profile right there. So I think that's it. It's a fairly sparse surrounding. It almost reminds you of a La Fontaine sparkle pupa that technique right there but that's it really simple pattern and pretty fun to tie uh, i think this is going to be a fish catcher can't wait to get out there and give it a shot so that's it everybody i appreciate you watching y'all take care and we'll see you next time